In this video, I'm going to show you how I get a glass finish on a windowsill. Um, it's not easy. Now, I've got a board here which I'm going to demonstrate on. Now, this is only for oil based paints because water based paints, different story. It's so difficult to get a glass finish with a water based paint. But uh, let's have a look at this board. I've used this in the past to test out colours for my wood graining. That was a bit of wood graining there. So it's it's a good board to use as a demonstration um, to show you a glass finish using oil based paints, pretending it's a windowsill. Now I'm not going to use a sanding pad because 9 out of 10 times windowsills they're not flat perfectly flat and I don't use one of those I just form a sandpaper up usually and sand it down so I'll just show you the things I'm going to use for the process now first of all I'm going to give it a good sand down with this P120 all right. after that dust it off and then another sand down with a finer sandpaper this is P180 and then give it a dust off now once you've done that you can give it a wipe over with methylated spirits or a damp cloth and allow it to dry out now when you're sanding old paintwork sometimes you actually sand through parts to the burr wood so then you can't just undercoat it and then put a gloss on because you'll get bits of it flashing showing up where it's soaked in more so what you need to do is put a primer over the surface first make sure all the burr spots are covered with the primer um, this is the primer that I'm going to use. Dries really quick, 45 minutes, and you can put a second coat on. So what I'm going to do is after my first preparation, it's going to get a coat of the bin primer, allow it to dry, and then another sand using this P180. Dust it off, another coat of the bin primer, allow it to dry and then another light sand with the P180 dust it off then we're ready to apply a coat of the Brilliant White undercoat once you've applied that allow it to dry then give it another light sand with the P180 dust it off and you're ready for your final coat which is the pure brilliant white high gloss Dulux oil based and then that's it job done and you should theoretically have a nice finish let's see how it goes so again first of all I'm going to start sanding using this uh, P120 now I'm only going to show you little bits of these processes because um, you'll get the idea and then generally the oil based undercoat and the oil based gloss going on so you know make sure you give it a really good sand down right this has had a good sand down now and when you're sanding make sure you always keep with the way you're going to paint or with the grain of the wood I mean, you're always better trying to paint with the grain of the wood and sand with the grain of the wood. Now, I'm ready to put my primer on. I'll just show you this. Make sure you put some gloves on. Now, I've got some fresh stuff and I always work out of another tin. I find it a lot easier. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to top this up some of this fresh stuff first and 
I always keep my brush in this. I've used this recently so I don't have to stir it up as much but this stuff you really do get sediment on the bottom so you've got to make sure you give it a really good stir up. I'm also going to add some methylated spirits to this to thin it out a bit. Is that a good stir up? Very difficult stuff to use this. It's got really good properties but it dries amazingly fast so you've got to be so careful with it literally be as quick as you can because it does dry that quick and if you're not careful you'll end up with too many brush marks in it. Now I'm going to put a nice coat on here because it's only a small area I'm working. Literally see as I'm I'm not gonna go back over that area now, I'm just gonna let it settle down. It's all about laying off. That's not too bad for the first stage. Right, that's already drying off there, so I'm going to leave that now. So if I start playing with that anymore, all I'm going to do is create ridges in it. Right, so that's not too bad because again it does need another sand down so I'm going to let that dry now and then I'll give it a sand down and I'll show you this is dry now so I'm going to give it a sand now with the P160 make sure you give it a nice sand Once you've sanded it off, dust it and then give it another coat of bin primer because it's gone bare again in some places.
when it comes to your brushes, I keep mine in water. Um, this is the brush I'm going to use. It's a two inch. I'm just going to let a bit of that water drain out there. Now usually what I do with that is just rub it out on a board that I've got to knock out the water first. Um, and then what I then do is clean it out. So old piece of paper, I've got my scraper, and I'll just run down the stock onto the bristles, making sure you clean that top edge. So that's where you're going to get all your bits coming out and your brush. You see all that rubbish there coming out. rinse out in some white spirit. I'm going to use clean white spirit for this because it's um, you know pure brilliant white I'm using so I'm not going to use dirty turps to clean anything out because I'm after a perfect finish. So, some white spirit in the bottom there and give the brush a good clean out. also going to do is just give it a little bit of go over with the wire brush this is a process I do before I'm doing any undercoating um, and then usually once my brushes have been cleaned out from for the undercoat I'll just give them a quick rinse and they go in my gloss the next day Final rinse. Now, what you're better doing is allowing this to dry out for a bit because that's full of white spirit now. So you can let that dry out for a bit. Pull that back in there. Now I'm ready to get my paint out. That second coat of BIM primer is dry now, so I'm going to give it another sand down. then give it as dust off now that's ready for the undercoat now um, I've already got it ready it's the right consistency what I want so I'm just going to strain this Now 
Now when you're doing this, the last thing you want to be doing is too much preparation after you've been doing some undercoat because you don't want loads of bits and dust in the air while your undercoat's drying. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to work my brush into this undercoat a little bit. Make sure it's worked into the stock a little bit. It's not too bad. Now, the trick with this is not to be scrubbing it on and spreading it out too thinly. You want to get a nice even coat on and then as you're laying it off you reduce the pressure on the brush which leaves a really nice perfect finish. Um, I'll try and get the camera closer in so you can get a better view. So what you're trying to do is get an even coat of paint on. Then when you've got it on, it's about laying it off. Closing up. the brush marks. And when the oil dries, the oil slightly shut up, leaving a smoother surface. The beauty with oil is it leaves you more working time. No, that's not too bad for the undercoat. Now, I'll let that dry and then it needs another sand. to gloss. Perfect. This undercoat is dry now so it's ready for its final sand. You can use finer sandpaper if you want but I find this works okay for me. This is uh, P180. So when you've put the oil-based undercoat on, 
it sands a lot better than the bin primer does. So you can really give it a good sand and try and flatten some of them brush marks off a bit. It's not too bad at the minute, but you can flatten it a bit more. Just show you this corner. that powder there. That's flattening all the ridges. Once you give it a really good sand down, getting rid of them brush marks, give it a good dust off. At this stage you can use a tack cloth if you want but I find just a good dust off is good enough. Now the brush I'm going to use is the same brush. I've kept it in my water overnight so all I'm going to do is just push that board away for a second is I'm going to knock out the water in this. Get rid of the water first of all. You see that the water's come out and then once I've got rid of the water I'm not going to do any scraping or using the wire brush because you can disturb something but what I am going to do is just give it a rinse out with some clean white spirit just to get rid of that undercoat really another quick rinse again I'm going to let that dry out for a minute now when it comes to glossing in a room, what you're better off doing is making sure everything's clean, it's been hoovered up, all your dust sheets are clean, all the sanding of the undercoat has been done, if possible, so then you're ready to put your gloss on. And once you put your gloss on, you're better vacating the room and leaving it. Don't go back in, try and leave uh, windows and doors shut, if possible, as long as there's a little bit of ventilation it will dry out but what you don't want is too much air passing through the room and dust particles lying on flat surfaces because um, that can you know it can just ruin the finish so the brush is clean now ready to go I've got the gloss all stirred up and I'm going to strain it because I have been using this previously so there could be the odd bit in there and I'm going to strain this into my pot now this is the same pot I was using yesterday it's got a bit of remote control that Now, the same as yesterday, you want to work your brush into that gloss. You want to get some gloss into the stock. Work it into them bristles. It's a very important part of this. Too bad at 
it's all on there. Now, again, the idea of this is the same as the undercoat, really. You want a nice, even coat and lay it off nicely, all in the same direction. And as you're laying it off, just let the pressure come off the brush. Let them brush marks come closer together. It's a lot easier actually doing um, a windowsill because this board's moving. If you do get any little bits whatsoever, you can just get them out, just dab them with your finger. Again, it's not easy this. It's a lot easier doing a windowsill in a customer's house. <laughs> this board's moving around a bit. When you are working in somebody's house, you're working to a standard. I mean, you always like to achieve perfection. But the fact is, you just have to deal with lots of different issues when you're putting gloss on. And you can only do your best. But that is not too bad. There you have it. Not a bad finish that at all. Now 
Now, if I repeated that process again, on the coat and another gloss on top of that, it would be absolutely like a totally glass. But at the minute, that's not too bad. Now, a little bit of some of there. You always have a few minutes to sort stuff out with your gloss. It's a lot better to use than water base. Now, as that dries, the brush marks will slightly pull together and it will look even smoother. Now, I'll explain the principle behind laying off. I'll just put that on board there for a second. So, your brush with the bristles, the harder you push it down, the wider the spray lay like so if you only put a little bit of pressure on the closer they stay together all right so the harder you press the wider the lines lightly and they're not as wide and what you have to achieve in is as you're applying it will be quite wide and as you start laying it off, what you have to try to do is bring them all into line so they're about the same distance apart and the ridges are all nice and the same height. And then as it dries, they all pull together and it ends up smooth. So basically that's the process of you laying off. You first apply it then you lay it off, then it dries, you should end up with a very, very smooth surface. Let's just have a look at this. That's not bad at all that for a windowsill. I think most people would be happy with that.